Today in our state, among the many social issues we need to think about and address are the issues of healthy relationship between boy and a girl, addiction to drugs and alcohol, and many others. So touching upon this today, we have uh, the fascinating story of Kevin, a team member of Crossroad International from USA, a former drug addict and a drug dealer whose life changed for better after a powerful encounter with Jesus. Here's the amazing story of Kevin on his own words next. Hey guys, my name is Kevin and I'm from the United States of America and this is my story. So uh, I grew up a really good kid. I had some awesome parents. Um, they tried to raise me right and they, they did well. Um, but you know, that, that's probably the majority of the, my story up and through high school. I was always, if you know the term, a teacher's pet and I was always really, you know, people knew me as a good guy. I had friends in every corner of the school, you know, people who were into music, people who were into sports, people who were you know, I was just had friends all over the place. Um, but along the way, around when I was maybe 16 or 17 years old, I started hanging out with the wrong people. Um, you know, I always said I would never drink or do drugs, um, but through peer pressure and, you know, people inviting me to, um, I remember I just, I started to drink and hang out and party with friends. Um, you know, but, you know, I said I'd never do that, but I'd really never do drugs is what I told myself. Um, but I ended up smoking pot for the first time which just led to a lot of other things. And by the time I was 16 or 17 in high school, um, I was doing drugs, but you know, I always said that I would never sell them. But sure enough, you know, within a year or so, I ended up selling drugs as well. And so here I was knowing that a lot of young people looked up to me, that I had a lot of friends, that I had awesome parents and family that I didn't want to disappoint. But I was addicted to so many things and uh, so I kind of found myself in a predicament and I just began to lie a lot and I became accustomed to lying. I looked really good on the outside. I was really good at hiding things, you know, um, but I was dead on the inside. Um, I didn't know the Lord at all. I grew up going to church now and then, you know, probably twice a month, maybe three times a month. And, you know, there were some times I had an encounter, or like really felt passionate. But as soon as I left the church um, or as soon as I left the building, you know, it was as if it never happened. And so I found that I had a, a desire to do good, but I had no capability of it. I was just, uh, you know, bound to so many things that I couldn't get myself free from. And so I remember one of my best friends, Nate, um, his name's Nate Deasy. He's a hip hop artist in the States who's actually here with us in Nagaland. And he grew up a pastor's son and he told me, um, hey man, I, I actually got saved a few days ago. And I was like, what do you mean by that? I thought we were saved, you know, because when I was a young kid, I said the prayer, I did what you're supposed to do, um, and thought I was just good to go to heaven and do whatever I want on earth, basically. And long story short, a few days later, Nate had came over to my house, and we'd been having a party. And I could tell he was not comfortable. And he sent me an email that night, basically saying that everything we were doing, that we have a built-in desire, a built-in place in our hearts for Jesus. And if he's not the one filling it, we fill it with other things like drugs, alcohol, broken relationships, lying, all this. Um, and that if he's not in that spot, if Jesus isn't at the center of our lives, we'll fill it with other things, which are never enough. So we keep doing it more and more and more. And at that moment, um, it was kind of the pinnacle of my life. I, uh, I felt the Lord begin to change my heart, but I didn't, I almost didn't want it to be real because I'd had it kind of happen in the past, but it never became real. And I remember that night I laid down and as soon as I closed my eyes in my bed, um, I just, the Lord began to encounter me. And I think I wept uncontrollably to where I couldn't even breathe for about an hour. And during that time, I knew that the Lord was taking out the bad things from me and just putting his love into me, uh, showing me his love, showing me his grace. All these things I always heard about in church growing up, but that didn't make any sense in my heart. And so after about an hour of just this radical encounter with the person of Jesus, um, I called my friend Nate who sent me the email and he prayed with me over the phone late into the night and told me, you know, yeah, you just got saved. This is what it means to really know Jesus. And so I remember waking up the next morning and thinking like, is this really real? Am I really set free? And I went to school and I remember sitting in my first class in the back of the room and a huge smile on my face that you couldn't wipe off because I knew that Jesus had given me a new heart. And uh, that's really what these last few years have come down to is that 
the Lord, when he died on the cross, and this is what I never understood, he died to take away, to kill our old self, our old nature, the, the me that couldn't do anything to please the Lord. And he gives us his spirit, his nature, so that we can be loving and full of purity and life and grace and truth. And so the, for the past uh, probably three to three or four years, I think over four years now, it's just been on this amazing journey of knowing the Lord and knowing his love and like, he does amazing things. He turns me from a drug dealer into here I am standing in Naga Land, um, talking in, church, in uh, schools and preaching in churches and seeing the Lord do miraculous things all over the nation. So that's my story. I hope it encourages you guys right where you're at and know that the Lord loves you so much.